everyone and welcome back. It's Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and I'm going to be showing you how I created this card using the Let's Toast stamp set and the Let's Toast pull tab add-on die. So let's check it out. So I'm going to be starting off with my coloring. This is on the Lawn Fawn white cardstock and I did stamp my images in the Lawn Fawn jet black ink because that is Copic friendly and I love to use my Copic markers. Now I did speed the coloring up quite a bit because I really wanted to focus more time on the actual process of the interactive part of the card. But I did list most of the colors in the top of the top corner in the screen there so you can reference that at any time. And I did pull in a lot of different images. Uh, some things I really enjoy is when I'm getting a stamp set like the Let's Toast stamp set, I like to go through my Lawn Fawn stamp sets, the other ones that I have, and just pull together different elements that would go together. I love combining sets, combining the images, and I found quite a few that went with a breakfast theme that I had going on. So uh, some of the stamps that I used is the I Love Eucalyptus. Those are the two koalas I had in there. Thanks a latte. Let's toast. Bun in the oven. And I used the cinnamon bun off of that. The milk and cookies stamp set. I used the glass of milk and the milk uh, carton. And then I also pulled in a little birdie from the Critter Concert stamp set. I did also try to use the bear off of the For You Deer stamp set, but I ended up not using that. But I did just want to let you know that that was a possibility in the scheme of things. Now, you definitely don't need to use that many stamp sets if you don't want to. You could just use the Let's Toast stamp set as there is a lot of cute images on there as well. I just really wanted to have fun creating a scene and there were so many images that matched well with this idea that it was just a lot of fun to put together. And honestly, this was the first non-Christmas card I had made since uh, not making Christmas cards or after the holiday season. So I really probably went overboard with it, but I had a lot of fun. They were so cute and it just really came together with all the different images, the, the coffee and the muffins, the donuts, whatever I could find that would match a breakfast theme is what I pulled in from the stamp sets that I had. So I'm just going to finish up adding a little bit more coloring to my images. I did forget to color the outer part of the donut and I do that later off screen once I kind of caught myself that that was still plain. And then we're going to add some additional stamping to these images here in just a minute. And I had already planned what paper I was going to use so that's why I went with a purple cup and the purple muffin. Now on the Let's Toast stamp set, there is this image where you can put jelly or peanut butter. So I'm going to bring in the new grape jelly ink pad from Lawn Fawn and I'm stamping that on top of my toast there. I'm also going to come in and these are off of the various stamp sets. So I'm coming in with the top of the cinnamon bun and I'm going to stamp that with some dough ink. And then I'm also going to stamp uh, my coffee inside of that cup. You could do tea or whatever you would like, but I did coffee and I'm stamping that in the dough ink as well. And I actually stamped that twice. And now if it doesn't line up perfectly, like with the bottom of the cup there, I found that an E44 marker matched really well with the dough ink. And then I just came back in with the same Copic colors that I used for the coffee cup and just filled in behind that liquid. Next, I'm going to come in and I'm just using a small acrylic block. I found that was a lot easier than doing this with a stamping positioner. So I'm going to be using grape jelly, plastic flamingo, and sunflower ink. And that is what I'm using for my sprinkles. When I was doing my Copic coloring, I did leave these parts white so I could add the sprinkles. And I thought they looked super cute that you could make in any color. And then once I have that done, I'm going to start coming in and adding the little shine mark for the toaster. Thought that was a great addition you can put on there. And then the smiley faces. And I just stuck with the smiley faces that are on the Let's Toast a Stamp set. I found that they fit all of my images perfectly, which is another really great thing about the Lawn Fawn stamp sets is that these just work so well together. So I did find all the different sizes I need. I put the smiley faces on most of the items except for the donut. 
that one. I just didn't quite find the right place to put a smiley face, so I left that off. And I stamped those in the jet black ink. And then I'm coming in with plastic flamingo and adding some cheeks. I left the cheeks off of the top of the muffin and the pop tart only because I thought it'd be kind of hard to see them with the sprinkles. So I just left that off. But these just make such super cute cards with those smiley faces on there. Once those are all stamped, I'm going to use the coordinating dies for each one and die cut those out. Next, I'm going to pick a piece of paper from the perfectly plaid rainbow paper pack, and that's the 6x6 paper pad. I trimmed my plaid paper down to 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half, and then I'm taking a piece of white cardstock, and I'm going to die cut out the reverse stitched scalloped rectangle window. I thought it would be really neat to have a frame going around my scene, so I just hold that down with some post-it tape, and I'll die cut that out. And I'm saving the inside piece of that because I'm going to use that later. So right now I'm lining up what I'm considering is the counter. So this is using the wood grain cardstock. This is the color paper bag. And to really set my scene, I'm going to go ahead and get this attached right away. That way I know where everything's going to line up. You want to keep in mind how high this goes up. If you put it up too high and you try and do the pop-up, your toast is going to catch and it's not going to slide very well. So you want to definitely keep in mind how high you're putting that countertop or if you're just adding uh, something to the bottom half of your card. And then using the lawn fawn glue, I'm just attaching that scalloped border around the edge. Pushing down really well, making sure that that's holding tight before I do any more die cutting. Once my border is adhered really well, I'm going to take the tab die and I'm going to line that up on top. I wanted my toaster off on the side, so I'm just positioning that off on the left-hand side, kind of lining up where my toaster is about going to go. You can definitely measure these out, but I'm kind of a, more of an eyeball person, so I just eyeball where I want it to go, hold that down with the post-it tape, and run this through my die cut machine. I'm also going to pull in a piece of white cardstock and die cut that at the same time. And I'll explain that in just a minute. So I ran that through the die cut machine. I ran it back a couple times and it did cut through all of that cardstock, the pattern paper, the border, and that cardstock back there. So that tab does cut through all of that. And that's just so it's unified throughout. And when I attach this front panel to uh, another piece of cardstock, I wanted the tab to be easily accessible. So that's why I have that extra piece of cardstock. Now I'm just going to line up my toaster. And like I said, you want to be, you know, keep in mind where your countertop is or how high that bottom portion is. And I just made a pencil mark at the top of my toaster. And I have the slot now, which is going to be the part that the... Uh, toast is going to slide up and down on and I did decide to bring that down just a smidge and I'll hold that down with the post-it tape and run that through my die cut machine then I can just come in and erase that pencil line I had just made a really light mark so it was easy to erase and our toast is actually going to cover that piece up anyway so then next I'm using that scrap paper that had come from when I did the border and I'm running the pull tab through and that little strip which is going to help secure or help keep our pull tab straight in the back. So the first thing you want to do is there's some score lines on here. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but Kelly does a really good job explaining this in the intro video. So that first score line you're just going to fold in and crease with the bone folder really helps have those nice crisp lines and then fold out. And doing the same thing on the other side is fold that first scored line in and then the second one out. So you're going to have these two tabs here. And then I'm just going to push down really well with my bone folder. Next, we're going to slide this through our card, the slot that we made. We're going to slide this through from the back. So kind of fold those two tabs up. And then we'll just slide that through from the back and then open them back up. And this is what we're going to attach our toast to. Now what I like to do is uh, use score tape. Just It's 
my go-to when it comes to interactive cards, especially if my son gets his hands on the interactive cards, the score tape really holds up well. So I'm just going to put a couple little strips onto those tabs with the score tape. And then I can remove the backing on those and attach the toast right to those tabs. And that's going to fit perfectly. And I like to always use my tweezers when it comes to that because then I can see everything. And you can see that slides really well. So next, I'm going to go ahead and add some foam to the back of the toaster. Keep in mind when you're adding this foam uh, where your toast is going to be. Because if you put your foam too far in, it's going to block the toast and it's not going to be able to slide. So I did die cut the slot for the toast to go through. I apologize, I forgot to show that. But I did just slide the toast through that slot and you can see it's moving beautifully. Now one thing you can do is taking that strip and we're going to attach this to the back of the card to help keep that straight when it's sliding up and down. And I cut mine in half because I didn't have a lot of room. Since my card is landscape, I don't really have a lot of room for my strip on the back. So I cut mine in half and I'm going to add square tape to the back of this strip. And this is the middle part because there are two score lines on here. So I just added some foam tape to the back of that and then a little bit on that front tab. And we're going to secure that down to the back of our card. So I'm going to remove that strip, turn it over, line that middle portion up with our strip for our pull tab, and then push that down, fold over our tab, and then I can remove that uh, backing strip on my other piece of score tape, and I'm going to fold that tab over. So this little strip is not actually attached to our pull tab mechanism. It's secured around it. So that's just going to help keep uh, our mechanism straight when we attach it to the card. So see that still moves beautifully and it's straight up and down. So I'll put my toast back in the toaster and just cut off that excess. I had already gone ahead and die cut this uh, decorative piece for our pull tab and I used it from the extra I had from the perfectly plaid paper pack that I used for the background. So that matches great with my background. To finish off the interactive portion of the card, I'm going to use that white piece of cardstock that I had die cut the tab off of, and I'm attaching my panel to that. So I'm just adding some foam tape. This is going to help make room for our pull tab to slide up and down. So I'm just adding that all around, but you don't want to get too close to the pull tab because you want to make sure that's still going to move freely. So once I have all that backing removed, I'll add that to that white panel. And then this can be attached to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base, or you could just decorate the back of this panel, which I thought was really cute because it would help eliminate some bulk if you're going to mail these. You could just stamp some messages or decorate on the back of the card before you attach everything to it. So just another option if you're looking to eliminate some bulk. Now, one thing I thought that would be really cute is to have this little koala actually holding one of the breakfast elements. So I just cut a little slit where his arms are, and I'm going to use the cinnamon bun, which was a perfect size for him to be holding. And I'm just going to take some liquid glue and attach that cinnamon bun into his arms. So it looks like he's getting ready to eat breakfast. Once I have that attached, I'm just going to take all of my items that I die cut out and line them up on my card where I want them all to go, where they're going to fit. I also want to make sure I'm keeping room for a sentiment. So I like to do this before actually putting the adhesive down. That way, if I want to move things around, I can. Uh, when I was lining everything up, you'll see here I had a bear that I wanted to have behind that coffee cup. And I still think that would be a super cute idea, but it just wasn't working for my card since there was just so much going on and I needed to re leave room for a sentiment. So I did decide to pull that off, but that is another really cute idea you could use. Now that I kind of have an idea where everything is going to sit, I'm going to start attaching everything. Now for some of these items that are going to be sitting in front of the toaster, I'm just going to put some liquid glue to the top of the item and then some foam tape, I'm going to cut down into some little thin strips and add that to the bottom. That way they're all level, they're all the same height. 
since I'm using the same foam tape or if you're going to use foam squares using the same uh, width throughout the whole card. And I added that little birdie I just thought was really cute. That was from the Critter Concert stamp set and just added that in there because it was a perfect size. And I know this card to some may seem uh, maybe a little too much, but I had a lot of fun creating it, pulling in all these different images, this cute little breakfast scene. Another idea I had with this was taking the picture frames and adding a picture frame to the background to really complete it, make it look like a kitchen. But like I said, I may have gotten a little carried away with all of my cute breakfast items that I just left that off. But another thing to consider if you're looking at cre recreating a card similar to this. Now once I have everything in place, I need to add a sentiment to the front of the card. So I'm just finishing off by adding my little koala with his cinnamon bun. And then I'm going to bring out the Let's, Let's Toast stamp set again. And using some sugar plum cardstock, I'm going to white heat emboss the sentiment. So this is going to say, popping up to say, I love you. And what I'm just going to do is just have some simple strips uh, for the sentiment. I didn't bring in any banners. I just thought some thin strips would work really well for this, for the size that I had available for my sentiment. So I'm stamping this in the Lawn Fawn Clear Ink, and I did prep my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool just so that the embossing powder doesn't stick where I don't want it to. So I'll go ahead and add that white embossing powder and then heat set that with my heat tool. And I'll take this off camera and I do cut these into just little thin strips and I'm going just barely around the sentiment. So they are pretty skinny and I think they look really cute kind of like labels. And then I add these sentiments to my card using some uh, foam tape that I had trimmed down. Once the card was done and I had set it off on the side and kind of thought about it, I wanted to add a little bit of embellishing. So you'll see in the pictures, there's a little bit more to this than I had shown in the video. I did go ahead and stamp and die cut uh, some steam for my coffee and I added that. I did also die cut a heart with some of the sugar plum cardstock and I added that right next to the sentiment. You'll be able to see in the pictures here coming up soon. And then um, I had gone ahead and added a shimmer pen to it for a little bit of sparkle and then I topped it off with some crystal uh, tonic crystal glaze just for some shine. So now you can see that it is popping up really well, super cute, fun, interactive card. And you could do the peanut butter, the jelly, or just leave it plain and add some hearts. So really fun. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you again soon in another Lawn Fawn video. Bye.